Hello, 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 hello. That is the wrong one. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Hello. Welcome to Wolf Den Live, everybody. Episode 81. Hello, AJ. Hello, Fred. Hello, Spuff. Mr. Ocelot Man. Brooks, who is here with me. <laughs> Hydro, Omniverse, Static. Hello, everyone. I am here with Brooks Eggleston. Did, yeah. did I do that right? Yes. I want to oh, say yeah. Eagleson, but I know that that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's forgetting a lot of letters. Yes. Brooks Eggleston of the Character Design Forge YouTube channel. Link is in the description of this video. How are you, Brooks? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me on as your, uh, your, what do you call it? Not stepbrother. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yes. No, yes. <laughs> that is it. Uh, it, de facto brother i don't know de facto stepbrother that is fine yeah i, I like that uh, right. uh your voice is a nice dichotomy to mine is i'm it? very loud and obnoxious and yours is like this like soothing deep like radio voice <laughs> you know what it is it's the radio environment there's like the, uh, the foam is right in front of my mouth and there's the big you know i i, I tend to be the wait that's a phone there. Oh, no, the foam. The, the foam. foam. Of the, uh... Uh, I was going to say that is some great quality for a phone. <laughs> yeah. It's a Sennheiser phone. All right. As you can see, Will's not here because he's dead. Uh, R.I.P. Mm. Will. Uh, he'll probably be alive next week. It's unfortunate. Yeah. It, it, it's tragic, but it happens. It happens yeah. to everybody. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a lot of things, uh, namely Splatoon, because that's still on our minds. You've played Splatoon, obviously. I see all of your old backdrop is like Splatooned out right now. <laughs> I I had the hope that we would talk about Splatoon um, <laughs> during the show and set all of this up. Um, it's interesting, man, because like as you know, being an adult, it's sort of I, I was that worried like? that <laughs> <laughs> like I I don't know if I I qualify enough, but like I, I've I think I've played most waking moments that I've had free since it came out. So I, oh, yeah. I, and all this maybe qualifies me, hopefully, to talk some Splatoon. Yeah, I tried my damnedest to play as much Splatoon as I could. I am absolutely horrible at it. You know, it's there's definitely a learning curve. How, so how much of the first one did you play? Zero. Oh, zero. Zero okay. percent of the first one. That makes sense. Yeah, so definitely, like, the motion controls are this, like, not just a growing pain, but, like, this teen angst that you have to fight against where, like, you play a few games with it and then you're like well surely the motion controls aren't really that good and then you turn it off and then you are doing everything with the analog and you're like well i aimed at that one guy for a split second really great but i really got to go back to the motion control yeah and, yeah that's what i heard yeah. I, like the whole time hearing about the first game i heard that the motion controls are the way to go and i was like that can not be possible yeah, motion exactly. controls are always terrible and then i i in January, I played a little bit of Splatoon at, at the Nintendo Switch event, and um, nice. I could not handle it. I, I couldn't figure it out at all, because I only get like 20 minutes with it, and I just I just couldn't do it. And the guy was trying to explain to me how to do it, and I just couldn't. And since then, up until now, I was like, I can't picture that being the way to play. And that's right. why I made a video on how, how to, or what, what the best way, what the best controller to use is. Exactly. And... Uh, it is definitely the motion controls, 100%. Yeah. And everybody in my comments who is saying that that's just your opinion, man, have, hasn't given the motion controls enough of a chance. Right. And, and whatever sensitivity or FPS like settings you're, you're used to, I, I just, I don't know. I, I can't relate to you, you know? Like, I, that's fine. If that yeah. works for you, cool. It's, it's just the, the, the right analog stick is not the same as other, like, third-person shooters. It just doesn't... Right. Like, Nintendo didn't put any effort into making that work right because the motion <laughs> controls are so good. What's interesting, though, is, like, um, because I, I agree with you on that, but then, like, you also do need the right analog stick. Like, I was... Um, so my co-host on the show I do that's uh, called Character Select is, uh, is Mark, and he just is playing it for the first time he played none of the original and he said he was like basically trying to like drive like a car yeah like, you know <laughs> tilting and then and then he realized that he needed to use the right analog right stick. like that's that's true yeah, it's, it's not completely useless but y right, you need it for right. the left and right movement have you exactly. tried playing with the split joy con at all no i i want to because what i love um 
so far on the switch is like just kind of leaning back on the couch with like one in each yeah. hand N not even like the nunchuck cord in between you know yeah. like that's kind of a new thing um but i do i do want to try that i've been mostly pro control yeah the pro control pro is the best is but so. it's interesting using the split joy con because you use it just like a wiimote yeah. and you have more movement left and right it's 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 definitely right. a lot different cool yeah i'll probably end up trying that tonight so how how much have pick. you played of Splatoon? I've only played so, a bunch of like online matches. Yeah, I um, have only done World One of the single player. Oh, that uh, too. Just because. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, got my my feet wet in the glittery ink <laughs> um, of single player. Uh, man, like yeah, I, I got up to level ten, uh, maybe eleven with uh, the turf war stuff. But I gotta say, like when it's available salmon run has got to be like the best gameplay loop that i've played in probably like this year or in a while really? because it's like yeah it's it, the thing is like with a lot of those like kind of grindy almost it's sort of rogue i don't i don't know i'm throwing stuff around it's a horde mode but like <laughs> but usually those things are like not fun to play but you get you know the loot or whatever that's worth it and to me like salmon run playing salmon run is the reward like it's that fun to me i don't know if you've got much time with it i haven't played it at all all i see is everybody tweeting yeah. how pissed they are that they can only play it online at certain time slots that's a really interesting thing and i don't know if it's a good thing or not like it's i it's think weird. that's a, a very poor move i don't understand why they would yeah. that would need to be met necessary it's it is kind of to me it's restricting the best part of your game and i'm not sure if like it's because everyone would only be playing playing salmon run and like because it's people would feel it's superior to turf war or, or rank stuff i you know i just don't know it's it's kind of crazy yeah do they not um, want that to be the main mode but like who cares if people are right. playing your game right it's sort of a path of least resistance thing like people are gonna like what they're gonna like yeah exactly um, let, let let the players turn your game into what they want mm -hmm. i have to yeah, say fred. thank you fred for the two dollar super chat saying thank god for this will upgrade <laughs> oh no oh man the notification came super late for that for some reason he's gonna be really disappointed when will is never back and i'm on every week yeah <laughs> oh, wait no <laughs> will will be really disappointed too <laughs> <laughs> exactly um I listen. I am just a. I'm just a steward of the will seat. Yeah, it, it, it will pass through more hands. So um, that's cool, you friend. You have your own YouTube channel, Character Design Forge. Yeah, I actually found you through AJ in the chat. Fanatics Four. He sent you to me and was like, "Hey, this guy is doing something that is very similar to you because I do the art on Shoddycast." Yeah. yeah. Um, and I started okay. watching your videos and I like it. Sweet. Uh, tell me, tell us about your channel. So basically what it is, is a series of me, a series of videos of me trying to help people learn art and character design that people tend to watch and uh, alternated with uploads of a show where my friend and I have fun that nobody watches. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that usually happens. Um, yeah. So I, basically character design is what I'm all about. I am a freelance character designer. Um, I tend to make uh, characters for like, uh, like mascots for businesses and stuff, but also um, like indie games uh, like that need art and characters uh, done for them. Um, and like, of course, you know, talking about uh, Splatoon and stuff now, uh, like Nintendo's a huge influence on my work and, uh, you know, kind of games is where my focus with character design is and uh, actually working on our own game at the moment, which uh, we've sort of, all but like officially talked about um on character select uh the the show that we have going on there so yeah um most of it is like the intent is like educational but also sort of documenting my growth also through um kind of not learning character design but just kind of progressing getting the experience um so that's why i like to share like kind of either things that i'm struggling with or um you know what things i'm excited about uh when it comes to my own personal work as well so so what made you that. want to do uh 
a series on character design specifically because there's all there's there's you could do video games you could do yeah. different types of art there's all different types of art you could do you could do a, a whole series on digital art which people do but you mm-hmm. specifically targeted character design why that yeah well i didn't really see and i didn't i don't think i saw any people necessarily doing it like justice or frequently um or maybe just not enough people and i don't remember um but i you know there was kind of the unfilled you know niche for for one thing but ultimately kind of comes down to what i love like this is just unfiltered the thing i love doing the most um it's what i've always been drawn to drawing uh that's such an awful sound (laughs) um but you know it's like I, I was never really the guy drawing spaceships or cars or landscapes or right. buildings. It was like always characters for me and um, like visual storytelling and having stories to tell is a big part of it for me too. Like um, sort of like to me, drawing needs to have a certain amount of purpose to it um, and telling stories is that for me. So I, I, yeah, and I, I, I see a lot of some YouTube channels that target concept art. But none that right. are specific character design, which is a very like important yeah. part of concept art. Exactly, and it, something I I noticed too, um, which I have like a, a a premium course for this too, which I have like ten hours of video on. Um, shill it, I, shill, I realized, shill. Guys, you can head on over to <laughs> now. You'll find it. You'll find it. This is go to his exactly channel. Now. Look at it, especially if you want to learn concept art. Boom. God damn. Um, no, but I noticed that like most people are like, hey, guys, here's my speed painting. And it's like the sketch is almost already done or they don't talk about what they're doing or why. And that's why I like to get into like the methodology and the thinking um, and process behind it. If I've got the sketch in the video, I at least try to, you know, focus on what the plan was there, because after that, you're just like it's like line art or it's rendering or you know coloring. And that that is the bulk of the time spent when you're making a finished piece of art. But it's like it's the most important is that that initial like decision making that you're doing in the sketch yes so I, that's why i kind of i very of rarely see other artists talk about the initial sketches or, or where they came up with the idea for the piece that they're doing and yeah. that's always difficult to show people like because because i do the twitch streams and yeah. i never i never prepare for it and a lot of these other streamers or creative people they they they'll do all of that off camera right and then it's, start yeah, it's with the sketches because it's it's you know it's more glamorous but yeah man it's, it's dirty <laughs> it's because it's a vulnerable place to be in and i think it's if you want this like veneer of youtube perfection and stuff you're gonna start with a really nice sketch and not show people the awful ones and the weird thing is that that like kind of perpetuates this idea of like oh well professional artists uh, only you know make great stuff they never make mistakes and you know that's never the case like the the first few sketches as you're kind of sculpting stuff out or or figuring out what a character looks like is just terrible like the you know anatomy is all off their pose is really awkward like there's a lot of that stuff that tends to go on um i don't think i like glorify that aspect of it with my stuff i i can't in this moment remember any video i've ever made so i don't know (laughs) what i'm talking about um but like it's yeah to me that's just more important and it's like a it's yeah it's a vulnerability thing and um that's sort of been my goal is to like share at least a little bit of the rough side of things too so not enough people are i'm sure you also research concept art and character design from other video games uh do you have any favorites of any game games past favorite concept Mm. art specifically from any game like for example i concept art yeah adore the concept art for destiny it almost looks yeah. nothing like what's in the game. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. I've got actually some good... Uh, my wife had gotten me an Oddworld, uh, Oddworld Inhabitants art book that's really cool because it's just all kinds of funky Oddworld stuff before yeah. it gets... You know, some of it's the 3D models, but it's like the pre-3D stuff. Um, and that's kind of cool because it, it goes back to a time when they really had to reduce, um, you know the detail level in order to get it into the game yeah Um, and so some of the painting stuff is just all all off the wall um yeah and i like it's uh there's i kind of go back to being a a nintendo fanboy in a lot of ways just because of their the 
the mindset that they kind of they tend to maintain is this this really classic one um and i talked about this in like my crash videos like the difference between modern and classic design um it's just like you look at how much a character will change over the years especially in gaming that's not a nintendo character and then you look at like how you look at each smash brothers like those original what is it eight characters in smash and how like little they actually change over the next four games of smash you know like yeah it's just little graphical improvements and and like detail embellishments but the character itself stays the same because they were designed like really well in the first place right um, until you get to crash in like the xbox 360 area when he's got like tattoos right <laughs> yeah i know yeah the tribal tattoos um yeah so i, I tend to like kind of my main I don't know, like, uh, Splatoon's definitely, it, there's nothing about Splatoon I don't like. What's interesting is that it's, it's like this mix of modern and classic where it's funny because it's like a, I don't know, it makes you feel as you're playing it as though you're part of this youth culture that uh, I don't know if is, is exists or not. Right. But like, you know, it's this combination of like really well-designed characters um, that I would say are designed fairly classically and like the, the squid is pretty much the blooper from from Mario in a lot of ways yeah. um, but it's mixed in with all these like really like 90s skate culture and like trendy stuff you know and yeah it's it's very it's very super Japanese like yeah, th these that, are these are too. Japanese street kids and this exactly. is their culture that's why there's a lot of like graffiti in it right um we're talking about Splatoon again <laughs> yeah 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 um that's why there's a lot of graffiti. The clothes are like super like Japanese like street clothes. Right. Uh, you're right that the that the actual inkling designs are very. You're saying classical video games, right? Like, like classic early from 3D. A standpoint. Yeah, almost like classic. Um, classic as a design methodology of of like just the the principles that have always worked instead of like, hey, look at this new like trendy thing that we're doing. Um, yeah, it's almost the difference between like. Uh, 30s and 40s Disney characters and Looney Tunes. Um, like the trendier modern stuff tends to like skew more irreverent uh, and stuff like that. And it's like, it's it's difficult to, I think I explained it a little bit in that crash video a little bit more. Um, but what's interesting to me is like, what's Splatoon going to be like a few years down the line? Because it's that mix, you know, like how is yeah. it going to age um, from a, I don't know, from like a fashion standpoint or like a cultural standpoint of like, oh, look at, is it going to be like the way that we all look at the 90s is in regret basically yeah. or like you know is it going to be frosted tips is you know <laughs> the, or is it actually because it's this like this perfect little encapsulation like will it age as well as other nintendo stuff you know dylan in the chat says splatoon seems so jet set radio future and i was just gonna say that somebody else jet in the chat radio. also said i think it was nicholas said does he do you even read chat i just did that's proof that I do read the chat. I haven't. <laughs> but so much. usually we talk about a topic and then I go into the chat afterwards. Um, yeah, yeah. So... What, what, I just lost my train of thought. We were talking about Splatoon and how yeah. it would change through the years. Um, as the, the Inkling designs themselves, um, mm -hmm. like you said, very classic. Well, classic in the way that it's not so like... I guess modern video games is more like super detailed and like maybe over stylized when you look at something like a, like a Halo that right. just gets more and more like needlessly detailed over the years. Um, exactly. But that's Nintendo's like game is they, they, mm -hmm. they don't have the graphics, so they have to kind of go with their simplicity. I, a lot of people gave Splatoon 2 crap because it didn't look too different from the first one. Mm. I kind of disagree because I yeah. I think it's different enough because I mean you're not going you're not going leaps and bounds through graphics you're going from the Wii right. U to the Switch so it's not you know going to yeah, be I mean, this amazing difference but I, I think it's definitely different enough right I mean like this is the closest um, this is like the almost like the most Madden that Nintendo's ever gotten with like it's not a yearly release but Splatoon was like 2015 right I mean something like that. they don't they don't usually do that you know they, they don't group their their releases so so close together it's just like that, that nobody usually. had splatoon one because it was on exactly. the wii u and nobody had a wii u right but 
this goes into our first topic that I have here. Uh, yeah. Splatoon. <laughs> can, I, can I get the desktop here? Can I get a topic? <laughs> 22 mess- minutes in. Splatoon 2 sells nearly over 671,000 physical copies in Japan. Whoa. Uh, Dang, and that's Walmart re- canceled all those pre-orders. <laughs> Man. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, so it sold 600, over 600,000 physical copies in Japan within the first three days of release. To compare, mm. the first Splatoon for the Wii U only sold 156,000 physical copies in Japan within the first four days of release. Wow, is that a hundred percent attachment rate for the first Splatoon? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know there was a hundred thousand Wii U sold. Um, that's crazy. Well, that's in Japan, and it did yeah. a lot better in Japan than it did here, but it still didn't do that good. Uh, but yeah, that so is. You said that was. That is insane. That oh, is an insane attach rate. The hundred fifty thousand is in uh, for how many days? The original four. four and days. the six hundred yeah. is for three, and that this is only Japan. That's awesome. Uh, I'm so proud of you, Splatoon. I know. Uh, I think a I lot of that, that is the, uh, the 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 push towards Japanese culture. Yeah, because J- Japan just eats this stuff up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, additionally, yeah, you eat it up. <laughs> we all kind of <laughs> ate it up. Yeah. Addi- um, additionally, that's interesting. Oh no! Continue. I'm sorry. I'm loading here. No, I actually kind of lost a train oh i'm sorry i ruined that no. for you <laughs> no that's okay um oh just speaking of like how many copies sold like can we talk about how there's not a word to be said about the like server cr- you know issues or growing pains or not just the initial crash of the first uh few days like i i experienced absolutely nothing like with online yeah. issues lag you know, I, I didn't experience the only problem i had was it was hard to buy when it first came out it took me about half an hour to download gotcha yeah <laughs> that was I, it I went, yeah no problems playing online or anything except today about an hour ago people were tweeting network connectivity issues but i saw that yeah that's not bad considering the game came out a few days ago right that's i mean because that's that is going to be the most players ever online like statistically right is going to be opening weekend yes for sure I can't see why not. I can't see enough, a big enough thing bringing more people back over time, you know? So, so Fortune here says that Switch sells nearly 5 million copies. I guess that's worldwide. Yeah. Uh, Kyoto based on uh, 1.97 million Switches in its second fiscal quarter. Uh, that brings the total sales over 5 million units. I guess that's world. It's still not saying worldwide or not. I'd right. assume that's worldwide. Yes, that is and worldwide. And I mean, that's just as fast as they can make them. Yes. It'd be interesting to see what this would be like with unlimited stock. If they could actually keep up, always, yeah. Yeah, this is like the the constant Nintendo game is like, I know I was out buying Amiibo more so because of the shortage, you know? Like, yes. I, there's, there's that whole controlled supply and demand i I was legit only buying amiibos that i thought were rare (laughs) and not because i thought they were cool i was like this one is rare so i need to have it yeah exactly um despite the spec uh speculation of some analysts nintendo did not raise its full year sales target for the switch which remains at 10 million units so they're trying to hit 10 million within the first fiscal year i believe that's fiscal Mm. year and I think they could definitely hit that if they're already at five million, and the holidays haven't even hit yet. Yeah, so uh, that would that would hit March, right? Like that would be their yeah March. Their they have to hit ten million by March in order to hit that. Yeah, Bob, do you like talking about the intricacies of a fiscal year on your show? Like, is that a, a fun time for anybody? Uh, sometimes. I have asked that. I sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I like the sales numbers. Yeah, I, it's I, good stuff. I dig into this garbage. I hope, I hope you guys like it too, because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Software um, sales for the system were just as impressive as the hardware numbers. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, essentially a remake of the Wii U game, way to sh- throw mm-hmm. shade, Fortune, sold 3.5 million units. 3.5 million units, and they only sold 5 million Switches. 
That's insane. That is an insane attach rate. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's interesting because like the, there was some kind of attach rate. Um, what was it for Zelda when it came out? That was like something where like eighty nine percent. Yeah. But I had to wonder if that was just like almost a scalper situation where people were buying the game without the the unit and so it sort of averaged out that way so that's what they that's what people said it was Pe- people yeah. were saying that people were buying the system without buying the game because you know people would just buy the game later but then th- that right. was when the, the switch first came out but then about a month or two after there were reports that uh breath of the wild sold 110 percent it was at 110 percent attach rate so people were th- they they said that it sold more than the switch which didn't and make not including any wii u numbers right no so that didn't right. make okay. any sense. <laughs> and awesome. I, 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 uh, I doubt those numbers. I don't know where people got those numbers from, but I, I severely... Maybe they were shipped to stores, not actually bought by yeah. people. Someone used a Kalevin somewhere in their yeah. statistics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else do we have That's here? Fun. New franchise Arms, which ha- was released at the beginning of June, sold 1.18 million, which is a lot nice. more than I expected. Arms. I've probably spent a total of three hours with ARMS. Yeah. I, it's, it's good. I like it. I played 10 minutes of it at an event, and yeah. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's um, nothing wrong with the game. I don't think it's I, it's not quite at that spot where it's not at that Mario Kart. Kart Mario Kart. Wow. <laughs> it's not that Mario Kart spot of just like, hey, everybody, let's all play ARMS. Like, yeah. I, I think mainly due to the, like the physicality of it. Like it depends on your living room. Like, hey, let's all stand up, four of us, and and punch the air. And it doesn't have the uh, brand, the Mario brand on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I love like the character design of that. Of that is great. Um, and you know the the biggest thing that nags me about Arms is the fact that it uh, the motion control is fun, but the buttons are better. And it's almost so much of like a, like so much of a one to one with the motion that you're like, it feels like you're giving up something with the buttons, and it's like, oh well, this is, it's almost like cheating. I um, want to try it with the buttons. I've never tried it with the buttons, and I yeah, feel like that'd actually, be a lot more fun. Yeah, exactly. And and it and that's sort of the thing too is like, oh, I want to be a really good ranked arms player, and it's like, well, you're just you got to use buttons. Like, there's it's just not gonna. That's what I mean. Like they way. wanted to make it a competitive game you know right. people are going to just use the buttons right so that's that's where like my uh what do you call that my cognitive cognitive dissonance with arms lies and that and like crash came out the next week and i just messed with crash until splatoon came out so lastly on this list is breath of the wild which brings the sales to total to date 3.92 million just above mario kart 8 so Nintendo wow. again with the absolutely insane attach rate. Right. Oh, it has exactly. down here. To put those numbers into context, New Super Mario Brothers U, the second best selling game for the Wii U, sold five point seven one million copies over a five year period. Ooh. That's how good the Switch is doing right now. Yeah. Break me off off a piece of that Switch success. <laughs> Kate in the chat says, Splatoon is a great example of why I'm a Nintendo fan. I don't want hyper-realistic all the time. I can and do appreciate creativity. I think that's just a commentary on Nintendo itself. Mm -hmm. Because that's uh, that's their game. I only need, like, the most realistic, like, down and dirty, just depressing brown sepia tone game. In order to feel alive, so yeah, wish, just just, just a sentence. muddy mess. Yeah, you you need Fallout Three is what you need. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so this, that actually kind of goes back to what you were saying. Yeah, like Nintendo doesn't necessarily have the the hardware power up front, so they're they're resting on that back foot. But what that does is like, okay, you have a PS One era where everyone's trying to push, not everyone, but they the graphical limits are pushed with realistic humans and that ends up looking like i don't know what's a what's a realistic human game on ps1 like metal gear something like that oh, resident evil stuff like sure. that yeah metal that gear stuff, is one yeah that stuff immediately looks dated um and then you do the same thing on ps2 and that like you know whereas i think shadow of the colossus has like 
the fact that they're doing that remake and the remake looks so remaster really um looks so similar to the original mm -hmm. like i think it speaks a lot to how it's a it's a little bit more in line with that nintendo style um, yeah it's it's stylized time, they stylized it because they had limitations right. right and stylization usually just extends the life of how long your game is going to look good basically um because all the games that are really trying to push realism will eventually like get outclassed by something else on the next system and so right yeah that, i don't know how profound that is i'm sure that's well no i i, I get what you're saying it, it it's yeah. it, it 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 helps prolong the lifespan of the game. Like like right. like these games aren't now limited to the the era that they were made in. Right. A, a game like uh, The Last of Us, which I think is one of the best games of all time, mm. ten years from now we're gonna look at that and be like, this doesn't look good because right. it's it they you got the uncanny valley and whatnot. A game yeah, like exactly. Mario Galaxy, that's stylized beautifully. It's gonna be in four eighty, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. Right. Yeah. Uh, 10 years from now, it's still going to look good. Just like right. how Super Mario World still looks good. Exactly. That's actually, that's still like topped out on my, my favorite games. Just, and it's all, and it's not like you go back and look at it even now in like HD where the pixels aren't, you know, that CRT version. Like they're, they're the actual square pixels and it still looks just amazing. You're talking Super Mario World? Yeah. yeah do, exactly. do you have a top favorite game? Like a number one? Ooh. Or is that, that or is that a sore be... subject? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I do. I it's I think gaming is such a broad thing, even though there's the the genres I like the most. I let's see. I I, I just immediately say the original Super Mario Brothers. It, okay. It is not the best game, but it is my favorite. It's your favorite. Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, that's that's great. If I had to say uh, the best, I might say is Super Mario World. I like I, I would I put Super Mario World there in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's one of those, like, I remember it being played, even if I wasn't playing it, it was probably, like, my mom playing it when I was just a wee baby. Um, <laughs> it's, like, that formative thing, and it's just so, like, precise. Uh, I gotta, let's see, I'll give a shout-out to uh, Pikmin 2. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me, I gotta talk about something that's not Nintendo, man. But your your people are gonna skewer me because um, I do play other games. You, you listen, you're not limited to Nintendo. We just talked about The Last of Us for a brief second. We do, yeah, you d you did. We <laughs> used we used to talk about a lot of PlayStation on this channel. Damn it! Right, um, man. What else is it? It's it's so weird. Like in this setting, like all all the like <laughs> well, you see the Nintendo stuff behind me. It's like everything in mind is uh it's all that's there. They, I mean, they make uh, the they make the best games. <laughs> I I, th I think they do. Um, it's it's such a weird yeah. What, what's the best game? What was what you enjoy the most? I've started to make these like top ten five top five lists mentally even, and I can't even like privately. You can't decide. you can't figure it out. You can't. Yeah, that's fair. It just, that's it, it's a very tough question. Too broad a spectrum, I think. I've had to nail it down because I've I've gotten that question too much. So I was like, I need to just yeah. have a quick answer. But it yeah. changes. Like my top ten changes a lot. Right. I think Super Mario World's gonna be what I lean to. Like, like it's the one I've bought the most times. You know, like it's mm. it's the one that's just the most evergreen. Um, and it just has that really great mix of like pick up and play, but it's this this big world. Um, it has so much personality and. It introduced Yoshi and all that good stuff. Yes. Um, it's got like that that mix of the charm and also a little bit of like danger with Bowser and stuff. Um, do I say New Leaf? Like, does that Animal Crossing New Leaf, is that one of my favorite? That'd be well, interesting. It would be interesting. It, it might also be like just, you know, the point in your life. If, if, that's, if that's what it is, you know, because like sometimes... <laughs> Because games take, <laughs> I overcomplicate everything, Bob. You'll, you'll <laughs> it's me. totally sorry. fine. Yeah, um, but that because it's not even just like, oh, I saw that movie in that one hour period when I was sixteen, and I I really liked that movie. It's oh, like, it's like you felt I, a connection like at that moment in your life. I, I see what yeah. you're saying. 
Right. It's like, oh, I played that 30 hour game or 150 hour game over this many months. And it's like, okay, now that defines an era of your life. I honestly think that that's why I like that game Catherine so much. That's up there Mm. with some, one of my favorite games. It's because I think I went through a breakup right before I played it. And the game is all about how you're like fighting between your two girlfriends. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it and it's like this weird super weird like anime game that i would never have played otherwise right and yeah. it's, it's a puzzle it game at that moment it's a puzzle game with an insane story but it it was yeah i i loved it i absolutely loved it right yeah i feel like part of uh i think why like my wife and i were in like dug into minecraft so much um had nothing to do with like the outside world uh liking minecraft it was just like because where we were, we didn't have as much control over our circumstances as we wanted to be. And like in Minecraft, you had every oh. circumstance under your control, you know? Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's in, an interesting thing. In the chat, Emotional. Anthony Loria says The Switch is quickly become my favorite console of the generation. It just shows that you don't need 4K or the fastest specs to be enjoyable. Plus, Nintendo loves 60 FPS. That is nice. true. I'm just now realizing that a lot of these Switch games are in 60 frames per second. Yeah. Breath yeah, of the Wild isn't. Sweet. No, it doesn't have, like, it has too much grass. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's the grass. Yeah. It's the grass that does it. Why couldn't they have set it in a city like every other? <laughs> new, like, a, like a new Donk City. Yeah. Is that 60? Hey, it looks 60. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm, I'm sure they can hit it. Yeah, because those worlds can't be too, you know, no matter how big the chunk is, you're still loading chunks, right? Like, yeah, it's not you still get in the spaceship, fly off, come back. It's not a big open world. Where do you stand on the design of New Donk City? Like the humans versus Mario himself? Can't can't really defend it. Can't. It's, that's rough. Does yeah. it give you uh, Sonic Adventure vibes? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. And not not in a good way. I was not it's, I was not pleased when I saw that in the trailer. I was like that might not be good. That might not be a good way to go. All the other worlds look look pretty damn good. Yeah, I think there's some of the realism stuff. I think if you did realism without the humans it it would have been cool. Or like why not, you know, Pauline is is taller, right? Why yeah, not she, just make it all a bunch of like she's humans stylized. That are taller than Mario. Right. Why is she yeah. stylized but nobody else? Right. Like that makes it that even complicates it further. Like it's not just oh, this is a you know this weird alternate dimension because Pauline's there and she's she looks like Peach. Like it's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's very bizarre. Like just taller, taller Mario style humans would have been great. I get what they're trying to do. Feels mod decide. man says Breath of the Wild is barely thirty. LMAO. <laughs> yeah, it's like twenty nine. <laughs> I think most of the time. As soon as you've mowed down every piece of grass, yeah, <laughs> it's right up there to thirty. I had a good segue, but I'm just gonna say screw it and <laughs> want to talk yeah. about Walmart canceling freaking everything under the sun. Ooh. Um, a lot of people on our Discord were very upset about this, and I'm a little upset. Uh, I didn't have it. Per- I had a Man. friend who pre-ordered two, and I was like, "There's no way this is gonna last." Uh, Walmart it's, confirms it's, Walmart. it's canceling every single Super Nintendo Classic pre-order. And then in parentheses, of the horror. <laughs> to which they say, we're sorry. Did you, we're sorry. Did you have it pre-ordered? I did not have it pre-ordered through Walmart. You know what I did? I pre-ordered those two... Where are they? The Inkling Boy and the Squid uh, last week from Walmart mm. out of desperation. And they only arrived literally today. Oh. Like they, the the whole time they're saying like oh it's going to be available on july 21st i went there on the 21st i i don't know how you can trust walmart like I, anyone who's been 13 and calls their local walmart to be like do you guys have uh you know this in stock and then like they go off for 20 minutes and then come back and they're like we have lego xbox is that what you want <laughs> it's like i don't even know what you're <laughs> it, it, it was a little fishy that they were the only ones who had the pre-order mm-hmm. up yeah. I guess it was just the hope that maybe they would honor it. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of what everybody does, right? When they when they put up an amiibo for ninety nine cents and yeah. that's just you're just you you have this nagging thing in the back of your head that it's not gonna work out. And I'm sorry for those people that thought that they were in the clear. 
with their Super <laughs> SNES. Wow, Super SNES. Their classic SNES. So this is the email that everybody got who pre-ordered one. Thank you for your interest in the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Classic Edition. As you are aware, this is a highly sought-after console that will launch later this fall. Yeah, of course. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> due to a technical glitch, they're calling it, the mm. Super Nintendo Classic Edition was mistakenly made available last Friday evening ahead of the official release date. We regrettably will have to cancel this item on your order. We know that this is incredibly disappointing to you, and we're truly sorry for this mistake. In regards to the cancellation for this item, if you paid by credit card, your credit card has not been charged. Any authorization holds placed on your account will automatically expire in accordance with the card, blah, blah, blah. If you paid through PayPal, your payment will be refunded, blah, blah, The official launch date for this item is 9-29. Please check the product page on Walmart.com prior to that date for any updates. I hope you'll give us a chance to earn your business back. So... They're not even going to do a pre-order, apparently. I, okay, is there is there a legal obstacle in the way of saying, we're so sorry we did this because we had a quantity. Like, they, the pre-order sold out before they removed it, right? I mean, yeah. so there was a quantity in there. Yeah, people so were not able have, to go through. Right, they've got to have some amount of knowledge that of what quantity they're going to be getting. Why not say, hey, we're really sorry you know due to this we're gonna send you an email you know six hours before everyone else that the pre-order is live but i guess like you're saying there's no pre-order there i was, might be a legal problem with that. i was with some friends when i when I, uh the pre-orders went up and two of them got two each and one of them got their whole order canceled within minutes huh. and the other one was totally fine until That's obviously weird. now everybody's pre-order got canceled when you're able to order two of something that's so rapidly sought after, that's when you... Yeah. That's, that's why I was like, this is super fishy. Unless, mm -hmm. maybe the hope is that Nintendo is, you know, with it now, and they know that people are going to want this. So, you know that uh, Game... No, I'm sorry. Think Geek is a, like, subsidiary of GameStop, yes. right? Yes. Now, now they are. Did you see that whole thing with, the like, the NES Classic apparently where it was a bundle system apparently today you can get it or or so, something like that i didn't read the whole article so enlighten me. i i did see it well it, they might the other day what happened there might have been something more recent than this but like there was a series of bundles for like between 140 for like a tetris bundle and 210 for like a nice mega man bundle where they gave you an nes classic and then a bunch of like Think Geek merchandise, kind of like what GameStop does when they bundle like One Two Switch and Happy Feet the game and <laughs> everything into <laughs> yeah into, um, and I was actually like looking at all of the pages and trying to decide which one because the prices were different depending on like kind of what franchise was most desirable and I was like really like do I want to blow 150 on a NES Classic which I don't have I don't have I have a friend who has one that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, which the SNES, I'm definitely like, I'm going to do whatever I can to get that because I love all those games. But like NES was like not quite as many great games to me. And as I was debating over that, I was like refreshing each page and they all are, they're all gone. So, <laughs> I, I would literally only me. want it for the novelty. I have an NES. Yeah. I have right. the games that I used to play. Exactly. Um, but uh, Will has, Will got one. He got one pretty late. Uh, oh, nice. He got one in like January, February. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would only buy it for the novelty. It's, a, it's kind right. of the same thing for the Super Nintendo. I do exactly. want it, but I pretty much only want it for the novelty. Yeah. The games yeah. are amazing. I think this lineup is better than the NES lineup. Oh, for sure. But uh, as, well, especially the Star Fox 2. Exactly. Star Fox 2 puts that over the edge. Definitely. Yeah, it'll be actually kind of cool. The only thing that's like above novelty because uh, the same thing where i you know i own all most of the games that are bundled in like the the good ones at least um but like it, it will be kind of cool to actually be able to play earthbound with a super nintendo controller because you know i only ever uh played it with an the, emulator the Wii U version right no no never i, I never emulated no never, never emulate anything never, never do that first smartphone or anything like that you gotta pay for every game mm -hmm. don't, don't emulate ever 
I wouldn't have done that. I would have simply paid another person three hundred dollars for a cartridge. Yep. On eBay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to read here. Noah says Walmart is awful, in my opinion. Yes, I agree. Uh, Atten says Walmart terrible. Everybody hates Walmart. The people at Walmart, I'm sure they're great people. Like nothing against them, but they're they're literally not paid enough to care, right? To do their job. No, you're absolutely so right. They have no accountability. I, you know? I I also do not like Walmart, but when you're in the middle of nowhere, America. Sometimes exactly that's your only option. That's all you got. Yeah, exactly. They build whole cities around them. <laughs> when I used to be in a band, that was our like a like a hotel. You would go to the uh, parking oh, lot totally. and just sleep in the parking lot, and they'd be totally cool with it. <laughs> right. That's crazy. Yeah, I I kind of growing up would do like a lot of trips to. The, it had to be middle of nowhere for because uh, it was like racetracks. That's what my dad did for oh. living. Was was uh like kind of take care of other people's cars but you know in order to have loud cars it's got to be in the middle of nowhere so there's only the walmart and so that was kind of like going through young life it was like a almost a sanctuary of of sorts even though the quality of the walmart varies yes from, from town to town definitely so uh, i'm gonna plow through some more news that is not related to video games because we uh -oh. do talk about comic books sometimes yeah uh so there's a lot of controversy over Henry Cavill's mm. mustache. Uh, Henry Cavill, <laughs> Superman in the Justice League, is apparently filming uh, right. Mission Impossible 6. I think it's 6. Right. And he has a mustache in that. But he has to do reshoots for the Justice League. And the rumor... I mean, it's not... It was confirmed, but I, people are saying it's a rumor. That... Uh, they wouldn't let him, the Mission Impossible studio, whoever it is, Paramount, wouldn't mm -hmm. let him uh, shave his mustache. <laughs> they, so now Warner Brothers has to CGI out his mustache in the reshoots for the Justice League. <laughs> Which he's not in because no one saw any. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Off a, he's, he, a coffin or anything. Yeah. Exactly. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's still up in the air whether or not he's in it, even though they have to CGI out his mustache. Right. We'll see it in the bill. I wonder how many people it's... are going to work on that. Just oh, his mustache. <laughs> Way too many. I saw, yeah, actually what you're scrolling down through here. I saw like his description. that was so humorous post on Instagram. Yeah. The, people are saying this confirms that they're not uh, going to see Giada's mustache. I'll read it. It's this picture that he put on Instagram. He says, Dear followers, it is time to finally set the record straight in this mustache fiasco. Pictured above is not a set on Mission Impossible 6, but it is in fact the latest in a series of weapons being designed by Warner Brothers and Paramount Studios to combat the entity known as Henry Cavill's mustache. <laughs> there has been no discussion over whether to shave or not to shave for the justice league reshoots simply a re relentless campaign to put an end to the seemingly inexorable in inexorable conquest of the <laughs> despotic mustache stash sorry he says stash it is not a question of if i should shave it is a question of how can we possibly be victorious against such a beast without bringing our own doom raining down upon us so That's pretty great it seems like what he's first of all he knows it's ridiculous which mm -hmm. is good that people are people think this is a big deal yeah but it seems that he um th it seems that they're probably not cgiing out of stash it, it's just something that they brought up as a possible remedy to this exactly also it's I just think. reshoots so who knows how much he's even going to be in it exactly um I think inexorable is probably a cool word if a British person is saying it, like Henry Cavill is. Um, it's you know what I like the most about this is that there are reshoots happening, and it's with Joss Whedon. And oh, yes. uh, the first time I was remotely interested in this Justice League movie uh, was last week when I saw a trailer that was not completely black, and <laughs> there's a little bit of a triumphant like musical score over it that was like maybe there's some hope and maybe we're going to overcome something. And like, in, instead of just 
here's here's Aquaman. He's flying off of yeah. a, a gun shooting Batmobile. I'm uh, not. I'm not into these movies, but I'm going to yeah. see it because I I'm a fool. <laughs> <laughs> My ticket is not yet bought, I, I think. I'll, I'll sort of have to see the Joss Whedon stuff does help. It, it's a very tragic circumstance under which Zack Snyder is not, no longer right. directing. We, we have talked about that on here. Yeah, um, but I, I do think that hopefully Joss Whedon, like, it's not like, oh, Joss Whedon is amazing and perfect, but, like, I think there's already a little bit of that influence in there. Um, it, it's going to be difficult for anybody to pick up the vision of somebody else. You know, exactly, but it Especially is Joss Whedon. Like 90, yeah, and it's probably the movie's probably ninety five percent done. There's only so much you can do in reshoots, right? So it should be interesting. He he um, is probably the best person to take on that, right? It's it's actually there's an interesting. It's sort of this trilogy of like um, massive changes in a movie. Like so, Rogue One was kind of this first one that was like very like there's a lot of upheaval toward the end. And, you know, we sort of know how that turned out. Justice League is this way. And then kind of Han Solo is this third one where they were almost done and they took uh, Lord and Miller off and put Ron Howard on. That's the thing. Like, kinda, like these development troubles aren't necessarily indicative that the movie's going to be bad. Because look right. at Rogue One. There was right. a lot of issues. And yeah. it is an amazing movie. Right. Uh, so. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm still. Yeah. I. I could not it's something that continued like a, a, a cinematic universe that continued what Batman vs. Superman had not started but like you know not counting Man of Steel I really liked Man of Steel actually um, I was not interested in continuing in that universe and there's still in this trailer that was right. the first time I'm remotely excited there's still like the slow-mo of a, a golden shell like bouncing out of the batmobile like oh he hasn't <laughs> changed like the, the first it feels like this abusive relationship where we're all like well maybe batman's better now and he's more like he used to be yeah. like <laughs> nah the, yeah. the 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 first trailer for man of steel mm-hmm. was a really good trailer where, Definitely. where it's like all abstract and then he's like you see like a split second of him flying through the sky everybody was like this movie's gonna be amazing yeah and yeah. then the movie happened <laughs> exactly like they, they had the shot of him and with the beard and everything um that was that was an interesting i think i like a lot what a lot of what they did with that i think there's still a lot of Zack snyder happening to it Zack snyder the professional entity not the person who is undergoing right. some awful stuff um just some decision making throughout the stuff that he makes that's that's pretty rough that, what's inter- like with bvs like I was so hooked in the first, just this masterful few first minutes of it with like the, the pearls and the, the young Bruce falling in the well. And it just kind of, there's obviously some filmmaking strengths there, but just, it fell apart pretty quick. Yeah, it, 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 it did like the second half of the movie. You're like, what is happening right now? Yeah, exactly. And then just, you're using emails to unite the justice league, man. A lot of people had a problem with that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Titanium says, Marvel made Joss Whedon rage so hard he's working for the competing company. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? What else? Noah says, I love Bubsy 3D. I don't know what that's in reference to. I think he's just he's just exclaiming his love for Bubsy. Don't you ever do that? <laughs> I've never exclaimed a love for Bubsy. <laughs> or you might be a monster I want, for saying that. Let's jump into another movie thing. This is the last topic, sure. I believe, before we okay. take questions from everybody so load up the chat um rogue one darth vader actor joins cast of han solo movie oh boy that is really the only thing in this article it just says that the guy who played uh darth vader in rogue one that would be alden aaron rich aaron rick mm. mm-hmm. uh no wait as a younger version of there will be seven yeah, no, that the... that's the dude who's playing Han Solo. Right, yeah. Uh, the actor Which, who played Darth yeah. Vader. Spencer Wilding, or Wilding, he is Darth Vader. As in the guy in the suit for those, yes. instead of David Prowse, who's probably in his 70s if he's not yes. no longer with us. So he yeah. is going to be in this Han Solo movie, which 
I really hope doesn't mean Darth Vader's in it. <laughs> it just just because this guy's in it doesn't mean Darth Vader's in it. He could be playing somebody else because he's literally just a guy in a suit. Right. He's yeah. just a six foot six guy. Like they might need like him for something hope. else. Right. But I would I'd really hope that because uh, it'd be re- it it kind of it'd be a little weird if Han Solo comes across vader before he meets luke and all of them i think i'm just now getting because i didn't hear this i saw this tweet where someone was like uh something about like vader looking at a screen and seeing chewbacca and just is like oh chewbacca like recognizes him or something i didn't quite rec like understand it until this moment so that's good (laughs) i i don't know man if i i do agree because it's different when it's someone in the suit and you know there's you got those those guys that that do the the creature stuff and everything there's there's yeah. hope there that it's not actually him if it's actually vader i don't see how you can it, it was already like not so much a stretch in rogue one but like a treat you know like yeah a, exactly it was it was a big treat yeah and, and so just having him like at this point he's omnipresent in the star wars universe if he's now in this one too <laughs> like, yeah that well, just doesn't i don't know he it Maybe a maybe a tease, maybe a short mm-hmm. little thing, but like he should not be a main plot point. I don't want to well, see a lightsaber at all in this movie. So like uh, Han and Lando are like are flying the Millennium Falcon for the first time, and they've got like they just went to Seven Eleven, got some Slurpees, <laughs> and the the Slurpee just flies out the window and lands on like Vader's Tie Fighter windshield. Yeah, and, and he's like these kids. The yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna go alter a, a deal with that guy in, in thirty years. Yeah, <laughs> right. I don't alter it further. Uh, oh, that's that's Boba. Man, I ruined that. I believed you. I was yeah. I was totally on board with that. <laughs> um, that's that's gonna be rough. What else? What else? What else? Oh, nobody seems to care about that. Uh, so I forgot that we our new segment is tweet of the week. Uh, I have a tweet of the week here. Ooh. Here it is. It is from Tristan Cooper of Dorkley, who says. An excerpt from the writer's Bible for Batman, the anime series. Their take on Bruce Wayne was ahead of its time for on-screen Batman. I'm not going to read it because it's a little long. I'm going to link it in the chat. And if you're looking at this afterwards, it's on screen for the YouTube audience. Um, Agreed on BTAS being ahead of its time. Oh, yes. It absolutely was. Uh, In this little writer's Bible, they pretty much just say that Bruce Wayne is the disguise and Batman is who he actually is. Mm. Bat uh Bruce Wayne is is an act and Batman is is the person. So it's cool. kind of flipped. And that's something that a lot of people uh a lot of movies get wrong about Batman. Um so this is also they actually like straight up acknowledge this in Batman Beyond which is part of the same continuity. Mm-hmm. Um and I forget what it is. I think it's a villain that's like kind of gets in your head um and makes you think that you're it's your actual thoughts but it's actually them like trying to influence you and his his the way that Bruce gets away with it is like um you know the voice in my head was calling me Bruce and I don't I don't call myself Bruce like you know. Was, was I actually I heard about that. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I agreed. I th- I think that's a really important part of the character. Yeah, like like the reason why nobody expects Bruce Wayne to be Batman is because he's this like asshole, like playboy guy who mm-hmm. it, who it's played up how much of an asshole Bruce Wayne is, which they don't they kind of don't show much of that in the show because it is a kids show. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he's supposed to be this guy that you would never expect to be the. Batman, like the, the do gooder, he's supposed to be a snob, and right. uh, all even all of his charitable uh, contribu- contributions, they're mm-hmm. all under the table. He doesn't publicize that because you you want him to look like an asshole. They, they kind of touch on that in the Nolan universe, how he's like yeah. driving sports yeah, cars. Exactly. He's got like two girls around him when he's going to restaurants and stuff. Right, right. Um, you, you know what movie? did do this properly Uh-oh. <laughs> is that the lego batman movie <laughs> yes that was one of the uh, best batman movies <laughs> yeah definitely i was on board for that that got, it. that got it right yeah i think he's only bruce in like one scene of that right and he's even hey, but he, that, he uh, doesn't want to be like bruce in that ball. scene right 
Uh, that's, that's great. So let's go into the chat to answer you guys. I also, uh, if you use the hashtag Wolf Den Live on Twitter, we'll talk to you there. Or if you listen to this afterwards, you can just leave a comment and we'll go back a week and pick some comments to talk about. Uh, using the hashtag Wolf Den Live, Samoan Stig says, What's your take on the Justice League reshoot costing $30 million and the stash problem? We just talked about that. So I'm not going to talk about that again. Fred says, if you could anamorph into one animal, what would it be? <laughs> um, a wolf, you idiot. You big stupid idiot. Oh, yeah. And if yours isn't an eagle, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> an eagle? Oh. No, I was trying to think of like what's most useful. Oh, that's, that's, that's probably smart. Yeah, I don't know. Like an otter is probably the most useful. <laughs> yeah. No, it's please, please <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, probably pangolin. I like pangolins a lot. They're pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll take it. No real reason other than they're, they're sweet. <laughs> Who would you cast to play Spawn in the upcoming film? That is the most thing. I didn't know there was an upcoming film. Uh, that would have been Will's job to get that story. Um, Thing, things I know about Spawn is a guy named McFarlane who's not Seth. Yes. Made it. That's the extent of my knowledge. I, I, I would cast Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I read maybe like a chapter of a Spawn book once. Um, I have no idea anything about the character. I do like Todd story. MacFarlane's art, but I'm not a I'm not a Spawn guy. Yeah, yeah. I I do like okay Todd MacFarlane. Yeah, I like his Spider Man stuff. It looked cool. To my knowledge, Spawn is always in Spawn form, and he's not like he doesn't have an alter ego. To my knowledge, that I've ever seen. So. It really doesn't matter who plays him because he's in a suit the whole time. Right. And he uh, he always thinks of himself as Batman. Yes. Yeah. Mark oh. says, if you could cross over any two movie franchises, what would they be? Two movie franchises. Hmm. Hmm. Twelve Angry Men and Wally. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is there going to be an inevitable Justice League and and uh, and uh, what's it called Marvel crossover? I, I don't think so. Like they do in the comics. I want those universes to be as confusing as possible. Kind of <laughs> yeah, like how exactly. X Men the movies ended up being as confusing as the comics used to be. Right. I'm glad Let's that. It, but just kidding, we're not rebooting it. Yeah, I'm glad that the yeah. that the general audience gets to gets to experience that confusion. I think I'd like a because that was a terrible. I really answer. don't have an uh, answer. <laughs> I don't either. It's I'm a little too precious with stories like that. Like it's not. It's just it just ends up being like oh this giant robot ends up with the, all these little tiny creatures. I don't know. Yeah, I can I can't yeah. picture. I can't. Th I'm I'm also not that big of a movie guy. I'm sorry. I don't tend to. I, I like them, but they don't. I don't end up watching enough. I'm too yeah. busy making stuff. Yeah. That's the way it yeah. should be. Right. I have to go into last week's Wolf Den Live real quick and pick some random comments mm. there because I didn't do that beforehand like I should have. Oh, so I saw someone's uh, tweet about, or their their post. What I did realize is this would actually be like the first Star Wars movie without Anakin in it. Oh, I yeah. If he, if he doesn't end up being in it. Um, but I saw who said it. Fred Bushi said uh, it could be an Imperial propaganda stuff. And it made me think that, like, just Hannibal Burris with a <laughs> CRT next to him with Vader giving out, like, some some Vader propaganda would be pretty sweet. I would actually... Pretty that... sure this guy is an Imperial officer now, but we got to... The district <laughs> makes me show this. I, I think that would be smart if, if it was just, like, pictures of Vader, like, propaganda right. posters of him, like, around. That would be cool. Yeah. Oh, last week's Wolf Den Live was all about uh, the Splatoon's online app being trash. Ooh. Um, the Dark I will Side have to... says, just call your friends with your phone because you have the phone in your hand anyway, and it's less mm -hmm. pain. I will have to say that while the online experience is robust and I don't get any lag or anything, I just the only attempt that I made to play with a friend was I saw uh, my friend was online playing Splatoon. I clicked... I thought what I was going to do was like invite him to some kind of group or party. Mm -hmm. And all it did was bring me into the same match as him and put me on the opposite team. <laughs> and no, like, that's the thing. No you can't team up really. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, so I don't. The, the way I play when I stream it, I, I when I play any game, I yeah. usually make a room or, or or a fire team, if you will, or like a team, sure, a party, and I yeah. say anybody who wants to play, just jump in, just yeah, jump on my friends list and then jump in. And right. you can't really do that. You can you can fill up a room if you want to do like four versus four, but you can't. I can't do like four people versus random people on the internet. Right. The only way to do that is if I individually invite people. So that is another thing I can't like. I can't be an apologist for with Nintendo. Um, yeah. I can only hope that they'll like flesh that out with some major content release. Yeah, they're not good with online stuff. I'm hoping that next year. They'll have like a complete overhaul of all of their online stuff. Yeah, it could be possible that it's not in Splatoon because it's part of their infrastructure outside of it. And yes, it's you know a lot more than just the placeholder app that they've got right I'm now. I'm hoping. Plus, yeah, uh, I think it's next year. Their online service is going to cost twenty dollars a year, so right. they're going to have to have they're going to need ex- an excuse for people to not be pissed about all of a sudden exactly. needing to pay for it. Right. Because usually things that suddenly cost money that were previously free were so good that people can't help but pay for it. Uh, Alejandro says, saying that Wonder Woman is a great movie is like saying the Emoji movie will be the biggest and best movie of all time. Also, Bob, Destiny 2 feels kind of like Halo in the PvP. I'll start with Destiny because Destiny does feel like, the regular Destiny feels like Halo. Mm. Uh, That's because Bungie made it and it's the same people. Right. Uh, what was the first movie that they said? The, they they said Wonder Woman is a great. Uh, saying Wonder Woman is a great movie is like saying the Emoji Movie will be the the biggest and best movie of all time. Uh, What's the ratio of Stanley Nichols to uh, Shroot Bucks? <laughs> I have no. <laughs> yeah, this is I'm having a hard time with that comparison. So, so I did not like Wonder Woman. Will okay. really liked Wonder Woman. So. It's, I probably appreciated Wonder Woman more than I liked it. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I could get, I can get behind that. Yeah. Um, oh, here's another one about Wonder Woman. Jason Booker says Wonder Woman was cheesy garbage. It was a Xena esque. It was Xena esque, and it was something I would have loved as a kid, but it offended my grown up brain. That's a little much. I would okay. break down point by point, but this is a YouTube comment. I appreciate you keeping the YouTube comment short. <laughs> Uh, I agree. I kind of agree that that's how I felt. I felt like it was, it, it was, uh, it was trying pretty hard. Like, like I, I keep, I bring this up every time I talk about Wonder Woman was the slow motion hair flips. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing is like, I, I do understand, like there's sort of this, this parallel, this opposites thing between like earnestness and cynicism where I usually tend to appreciate the more earnest stuff. And I, I do understand how people will instantly reject earnestness as like cheesy or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I under- understand. Uh, this one is pertinent. Uh, Lionel says Sonic is not even top five video game characters. Maybe not even top 10. I like him, but he is not that big. Right? Question mark. Uh, I think he is. I I would assume that he's in top ten like most popular video game characters. Most popular, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, what do you think uh, about his character design? Because I think it is one of the best character designs. It was at this moment that Brooks knew. <laughs> it was him. No matter what he said, he'd be grabbed and used out of context. Uh, it's great. It's really cool. I it is uh, it was modern in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, I like classic Sonic. I think the new one's interesting, but I think is the new one being modern Sonic or having... Sonic Boom? The modern, not okay. not counting Sonic Boom. Okay. Um, I think it's really problematic when you've got two versions of your character, like literally side by side. Um, not just in a Star Trek Generations way, but like a hey, we're gonna keep going forward with Kirk and Picard in tandem <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because both. You know, we have two halves of our audience now instead of just committing to one. That's what they. That's um, the problem with generations, right. and they and they ran with it, which was maybe not the best yeah. idea. But we'll find out when Forces comes out. Right. Uh, I think that's a that's almost like a subconscious, um, like tell that yeah, it's neither one is strong enough. I think. 
So, so let's get real deep into the controversy here. Are you of the camp that there are no good Sonic games, or are you of the camp that there are no good 3D Sonic games, or do you like some Sonic games? There are no good 3D Sonic games other than maybe Generations, which is passable. Okay. I'll, I'll allow it, but I yeah. disagree. <laughs> okay. You disagree? Um, uh, I actually... I grew up with probably more of the mobile type, like the Sonic Advance games, which are two. Okay. Those are good. Three. Yeah, they're they're great. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I played through all those. Like, I, I I enjoyed all of Sonic. I was never, like, the, the person making their own Sonic OCs and stuff like that. Right. Although I did do that on my channel kind of i made my own sonic too <laughs> that Dude, my, like, i could imagine that doing entire, well yeah my entire creative career if you'll call it that is is has the fear kind of like any boulder chasing crash bandicoot that i am not no different than uh christian western chandler what is of, that uh, who is that Chew. the guy who made sonic Chew. i don't know oh. somehow something <laughs> mentally like i can't distinguish myself from that <laughs> I mean, yeah, when you're doing fan stuff, that's, that's, exactly. what's the difference? Exactly. Uh, all right, I, I'm, there were a lot of comments last week. I'm sorry I can't get to all of them because I'm trying to plow through all of this stuff. Um, I am in the chat now. So leave me some stuff. We'll do like another like five, 10 minutes. Um, uh, Noah says, I guess this is for uh, the franchises you want to overlap. Noah says, oh, okay. Transfor all caps, Transformers and the Planet of the Apes. Oof. I don't know why you would start that with Transformers. Transformers and anything, I'm not yeah. sure. Unless it's Transformers and G.I. Joe. <laughs> I, see, I just have to be the killjoy and say like that defeats the purpose of Planet of the Apes. Uh, yes. You know, like this, the the tone and everything. You know, like yeah. yes. <laughs> Pookie says Captain Underpants and the Avengers. I'm glad you guys are better at this than we are. It's uh, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. I guess. Dylan says, "So why are you a sexist, Bob? I guess that's because I didn't like Wonder Woman. Mm. I I I'm seeing Atomic Blonde that comes out like uh, Friday, and okay. that looks damn good because it's basically John Wick but with a girl, and I'm all about that." Interesting. And that's just my way of trying to defend myself about being a sexist. <laughs> just bringing up and <laughs> seeing another movie that has a woman in it. <laughs> sure. Um, what else we got here? Uh, uh, Atten says one woman's hair was on point. My sister was impressed. It was. It was on point. Yeah. Can't argue. Some good CGI or, or L'Oreal going on. Mika says, Toei Sonic is best Sonic? I don't know what that is. Oh, that's okay. actually true. Yeah, that's the um, the Sonic CD intro. Oh, yes. Uh, like the animated short. Yeah, that's, that's the best. That's what I was going to say. Like, there's... Yeah. It has some weird, like... So, I wasn't into... I didn't play Sonic CD, really, until recently. <laughs> uh, this is a DeviantArt thing. That's not yeah, what I, I wanted. Yeah, I touched it. Um, but this Sonic design is, like amazing it's like yeah. somewhere between classic and modern yeah it's perfect and that whole like classic and modern style of design thing i was talking about like removed from classic sonic and modern sonic like this is totally classic like it's just undeniably the best yeah this this and i like how they're doing this with mania yeah they're, they're picking that oh that sonic. uh tyson hesse and ooh, anthony b shoot he can he kind of came in to help um, that like that launch trailer thing for for Mania is just gorgeous. Oh yeah, that that uh, that animation is yeah. is perfect. Yeah. Uh, Fred says Sonic Riders fam in all caps. All right. <laughs> now everybody's blown up snowboard. about Sonic. Yeah. Uh, Mark Morbido says Bubsy has a better character design, <laughs> and he's <laughs> he's also the the co-host of my of uh, character select. So yes, he gets a pass. Uh, I mean, he's he's panties. got the he's rocking the t-shirt and no pants, right? Yeah, Bubsy's got the the exclamation point on the shirt. Nice. I kind of want that. I kind of want a shirt with just an exclamation point on it. <laughs> That's like the super like '90s cartoon. Like I wear this every day, like right. attire. It says a lot about Bubsy. It's just like it's Bubsy, and that's there's that's all the substance there is. Yeah. Nothing beyond that. 
Tommy, I'm pretty sure you keep sending this to me everywhere, <laughs> like on all forms of communication. Bob, Unfinished <laughs> Swan, please look into it. It is good. Please, please. I think I played like two seconds of it because it was free on PlayStation Plus. Damn it! That's what I forgot to do. PlayStation <laughs> Plus free games. Um, I'll do them next week. There's free games <laughs> PlayStation Plus. Look at them if you haven't. Huh. Usually every, every once a month we talk about PlayStation Plus free games and Xbox games with gold because it's free games and gotcha. people miss out on them. Yeah. Uh, I saw that NBA uh, kind of big-headed game is, is available. Really? That's one of them. I, I missed that. My trust. Trials Fusion is, is the one that stuck out for me on PlayStation. Uh, yeah, PlayStation. Also oh. on Xbox, Bayonetta. So I guess we're doing them now. Bayonetta is <laughs> on Xbox. And apparently that's supposed to be like one of the best games ever. So if sure, you're on Xbox, heard this. get that. Enough to make the most broken Smash character and, and ruin all tournaments forever. Yeah, I, thanks a lot, Bayonetta. I, I, really I like how it. I like how everybody was upset that Bayonetta was OP in Evo. But yeah. he the person who was playing Bayonetta was playing against a Diddy Kong who was the previous OP character. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was kind of funny. So it's like get on the same level. Right. Uh, anything else in the chat? Uh, Dylan, would people be willing to buy into ARMS most controls if it had classic characters like Smash? Mm, I don't know. I think people would buy into the game, but I don't know if they would buy into the motion controls. Yeah. Like, Yeah, I don't think it improves the game. It improves the marketing. Yeah, I think if the next DLC has, like, Link in it, you know, like, that would sell a lot more, but... <laughs> yeah, kind of funny. <laughs> uh, I guess that's it. I guess we're done here. Sweet. Guys, thank you all for cool being stuff. here. Thank you, uh, Brooks, for being my co-host today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. No problem. Guys, don't forget to check out his channel. The link is in the description. It's the first link in the description. Brooks. Brooks' channel, Character Design Forge, is all about character design. Sweet. And that is stuff that I'm into, and that is stuff that you should be into, especially if you want to start drawing. Also, and if you guys like. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, you can. I was, was going to throw a plug in. Keep only plugging because char uh, character select is very different than the other videos. Um, but it's if if people are a fan of this, like long form people talking, um, what we do is we come up with three ideas each for a game character uh, that's like uh, like a competitive multiplayer character, um, and just try to give it like the weirdest stupidest backstory and like game mechanics and stuff and we have a lot of fun doing that and then afterwards we have like a bio and a move set and i do an illustration for them so it's like the worst possible way to go about designing a character uh, <laughs> some of them turn out funny and i think it's fun to listen to we kind of like try to keep it to like a 20 minute small bite and so that's something we've been doing recently and i think i think more people would enjoy it than have been watching it so it, it is fetish. It is funny. It, it, it's it's good when you guys get into like the ridiculous backstories and you just guy exactly. like throw crap at the wall <laughs> and see what exactly. sticks. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that is character design forge. Go check that out. And, and if you do want to know about some doodles, if you like doodling, every week after the stream, I stream on Twitch where I draw the thumbnail for the stream. So I will be there probably in about a half an hour, usually around eleven o'clock. So. Fred already put the link in the chat, twitch.tv slash Bob Wolf. Go there and wait for me like a, like a kind gentleman, and I will be there soon. Also, if you have, if you listen to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Google Play, you can rate us and review us there. Talk to us there. It helps us out. Will usually does this spiel, so I don't know what I'm saying. Use the hashtag WolfDenLive to, uh, to ask us questions. That's the, the, the easiest way to get at us. Uh, if you want to interrupt the ch the stream while we're doing it, there's always the super chat. We will stop everything we're doing to answer you because you're giving us money. Um, and, of course, you can always leave a comment on the YouTube video, and we will answer it in the following week. Again, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Brooks. Don't forget to check him out. Link in the description. And everybody have yourselves a good week. Goodbye. Take care, y'all.